Hello and welcome to the off-grid mountain homestead. You saw in the previous video how to wash biodiesel. This one is gonna show you the final filtration because this biodiesel has been washed. So I'm gonna drain the sludge off of this one, but I have a waste receptacle for all the junk. I'm gonna recycle the glycerin back out of this mix. Uh, so on and so forth. Remember this one was mixed from the first video. This one was mixed different from the one I've done the video on so far. So I've got a clean receptacle right here for biodiesel. I have my waste receptacle and I have my biodiesel. I've got my custom little lid on there. So I'm going to drain the sludge off of this and put it in here for further processing and recycling. So I'm gonna get the clean biodiesel, then we're gonna filter it. So without further delay, see if I can do this without making a mess. I'm gonna turn it real gently, try to let everything change positions in the bottle because I want all the gunk in the bottom and the good oil up top. And if I stir it up too much, I might have to let it settle or give it one more rinse. But your typical biodiesel reactor is conical, just like these bottles sitting just like this so you can drain all the sludge out of the bottom. So you can put your thumb on the bottle like I talked about in the previous video or you can just use a little adapter or siphon, whatever. So I'm just gonna drain this gunk off here until I get down to clean biodiesel. See, I've got most of the sludge out of this one. If you remember from the first video, I washed this one in the bottle. The first three or four washes, you can see all the different layers of filth. We'll put water in it one more time, make sure that water settles to clear, and then we'll know that's clean diesel, clean biodiesel with no you know, emulsions, no nasty oils or soaps, and it's gonna clog anything up. So I got preheated water over here in the greenhouse. Just water in old milk jug. Then I'm just gonna pour it down through there and then let it, uh, I can give it a good bit this time because we're gonna let it settle for the last time and make sure that water's clear. And then we'll know the biodiesel is clean. So let that sit, warm up, separate, and then I'm gonna filter it. So now I've changed the setup. I've got a clean container, which was basically, that's just an old one gallon vegetable oil container that I've rinsed out. So that's good to go to put the processed biodiesel in. And then I have a diesel straw and then the rinsed biodiesel we just looked at a minute ago. You can see we ain't got no more water settling in there. So that's rinsed, that's ready to go. And the cloudiness, I think I stated that earlier in the video, that's just residual moisture. I'm gonna show you how to fix all that. But this is a water filter not designed for this and if you're going to do it this way I mean there's all kind of filtration methods I'm just trying to show you a simple way with things that you may have laying around so this is a uh, emergency water straw and I've labeled it for biodiesel and it threads onto a two liter bottle so I took my homemade drain adapter off and I'm going to put the uh, biodiesel filter on this bottle and this is a 0.1 micron so that's as good of a filter or better than, you know, an oil separator or water separator filter for fuel oils and cotton spun filter, things like that. So uh, let me see if I got the camera right where you can see this. I will adjust a little bit and I'll get right back. Hold on. Try to make it where you can see it better. So uh, let's try the, uh, the biodiesel filter here. There it goes. Nice. Got it just set up on a drip. Gravity feeding it in there. Of course you had pumps and stuff like that. Would be no, no problem with it uh, pulling through there quicker. So I'm trying to get it down here and show you the dripping. So I'll let it drip. Just gravity feed, pretty cool. So not too bad for gravity feeding biodiesel through a water filter, 10 to 15 minutes worth. So I want you to see, see how cloudy that is. Look how good a job it's doing it cleaning up the, the biodiesel. It's getting all the crud out of there, which is what we want. Nice and clear coming out. That's, that's great. That's actually working better than I had hoped for with that water filter. And you can see the drip rate with biodiesel is about the same as it is a water. So that's pretty good. I think I might have a, uh, a cheap 
filter. Instead of buying a $25 or $30 water separator, I'll just use a uh, cheap 0.1 micron water filter. Nice. All right. So it is gravity fed down into the collection container. The filter worked. Well, there goes the wind right on cue. I'm glad that didn't happen while I was filtering it, but the filter uh, held up. I'm gonna give it one more squeeze here and get this last little, little bit out of there. And it's, it's a little bit more in there, maybe a teaspoonful, just to make sure I get every drop out. There we go. So, you know, just a smidge in there. The filter, the filter did real good, didn't clog up. So now I'll just back flush this filter for the next batch. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That worked out better than I could have thought. So I got the filtered biodiesel now, right there. So now it's time to dry it. Now, if you're gonna use your, your cooktop in an old, you know, cooking pan or something like that, you can just pour it right into your cooking pan and uh, heat it up to about 180 or so. Leave it there for a little while and make sure, you know, the water's not coming out because you'll see little bubbles and stuff. But this one's gonna sit out in the uh, little greenhouse right there for a week or two. So if you're leaving it in the sun to cook, it's better to have a big open, an open container or a flat container, but about a week or so, it'll change color. Uh, you'll, you'll know when all the water's gone by the way it looks. It'll change just a little bit. So uh, yeah, I'll give you, give you an update on it after it's uh, dried, but it just filtered down to 0.1 of a micron. So that's better than your fuel filter on your diesel engine, more than likely, unless you have some kind of special fast fuel system or something like that. So there we go, nice, clean biodiesel. And that is junk on the outside, not inside. It's clean, the water filter did good. So three days in the greenhouse, I had the cap off, I put it back on. You want the cap off so the water can evaporate. So there it is, it's finished. Now it's time to use it in something. You can see there's no, no water settled in the bottom, the color's clear. So that is finished, filtered, dried biodiesel. Diesel heater, diesel vehicles, whatever. It's ready to go. So the next video on this series, I'm gonna be running it in some, uh, some different things. So I'm going to, I got the other batch processing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that other batch that this has been included in this video series so I can get at least half a gallon. So it'll be worthwhile um, draining diesel out of a, of a of something and then putting this biodiesel in its place but yeah that's uh that's biodiesel with crude stuff you may have laying around your house that's how you make it now with a reactor and a full setup and electricity and pumps and filtration blocks and stuff like that it goes really quick but if you're doing it the way uh way i did on this series with minimal equipment like a, a grid down scenario kind of thing is what i'm trying to trying to relay that you know you can make fuel even with crude stuff um it takes a little longer but it still works it's still good clean fuel i'm gonna prove that in the next video so uh, appreciate you watching off grid mountain homestead uh questions put in the comment section hope i earned a like from you and if you're not subscribed i'd greatly appreciate a subscription y'all have a nice day